Some small businesses can't afford a directory listing, but they have skills and they have talent. Their talent matches the hard work and the know-how. Their workplace can be from the kitchen or a van. The business might be set up in a home or a garage. You don't find these providers listed in a book directory, but you can find them on eqicaribbean.com, the online tool you'll need to search for products and services. Because as long as you are searching, we will be here to list them. And of course, when you hear that song in his courting session with me, Elk, and joining me is my co-host, Avenger Only One, that is Keelan Phillips. And tonight we have a special guest, that is Rashid Maynard from Pointless. Uh, Rashid was the player of the week in the Bay Bay uh, first week in competition. I'm uh, sorry, the peak player of the week. Just thought to make sure my guy Patrick gets some, some um, you know, get some kudos. Um, he had uh 22.5 points, eight rebounds, 3.5 steals, and 2.5 blocks. Um, Rashi, first thing I want to ask you is I know you had a good week. Um, you you're now two and all, but I want to ask you, how you see your chances uh repeating? Do you say as a you know, like is a high chance or or because of the all the um the, the, the movement that happened um, in the off season. How do you see your chances? Well, movement does happen all the time, but I find that points adjust a lot. So once the key components still there, we have a very high chance. I know there's some there there's some people on here that might not approve. I talking about Mr. Kim's man. <laughs> <laughs> Back to back this year, and you heard it here first. Okay, here you go on CIS first. That is <laughs> Rashid Mena saying they're going back to back. Okay, so we talk about the the Bay Bay competition, um, but I also want you to just just mention um, how you got the opportunity in Jamaica. Well, um, me, well for me, I was talking to Mister Tanis and. He was saying he knew a guy in Jamaica. So then he put us in contact. We did a couple of meetings and I went over there one summer for a showcase. And I was very successful in that showcase. I learned a lot from different players and they eventually called me back for like the actual season when it started. And from there, they keep calling me and hopefully to call me about again this is the season okay that's great um i know you had jamaica and not only you played in jamaica but your team won actually i think back to back right too so you're not you're not um unaccustomed to back to backs right so so we leave that one alone <laughs> but i also want to hear about the state in denver um how did that go for you how do you how did that come about well, after Jamaica, I realized there's a lot of opportunities over there. So uh, I eventually messaged my godfather, Nigel Lloyd, because obviously he has a lot of connections. He coached a pro team before, and he put me in contact with a guy, Dick, which is my agent right now, at the Red Brands, Crusaders. Um, eventually, we all, we had a couple of meetings again, because most of these processes, we've got, these processes, we've got to go through like, meetings, but... He eventually talked to Mr. Tannis, which is my sponsor, and he got me over there. He had the gym set up, the arrangement for the food, for living, and we just had to go over there and play basketball and do your best. We had some training sessions. Obviously, I had to hit the weight room. Um, we made sure we eat healthy. That was the most important thing. And my breathing. I had to work on my breathing over there because it was a little different. Yeah, they don't have that many in my whole city for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I realize. 
Yeah. So you got anything there? Um, Avenger only one. I mean, the fact that uh, apart from the fact that you don't feel he's gonna go about the back. <laughs> hey, look, uh, <laughs> hey, I didn't say nothing, right? I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. All right. Um. Uh, so Rash. Um. As I say, it is, it is, I'm glad that you get the opportunity to go over there. Um, you be or um over there could be a big step for other um Bajans getting the the opportunity, right? Especially as you are doing well over there and in Jamaica. So uh, very happy for you for, for that. Um, uh, but the question I want to ask you is like, what's the difference between playing down here versus playing against like the competition in Denver or in Jamaica, besides the fact that, that you can't breathe. <laughs> well, that's a main fact, ain't it? You can't breathe. <laughs> um, but in like Denver, we played against some military schools and some academies. That was more physical, obviously, than the military. But they always I think Barbados was better because both me and Darren was down there. Um, but we had that little connection, so. Uh, I think everything comes not for that once we get we breathing together. Um, but in Jamaica, it was guys from like all over, like Canada, United States, Africa, even guys that played in the NBA before, the NBA G League. But everywhere you go, the basketball is going to be different. It's going to be faster. People are just play smarter, but. Wants to listen to your coach and just have fun with him. You should get to anywhere you go. Okay, that's that's good advice for the young people coming up. You need to enjoy your basketball and listen to your coaches. Um, that's very important because you know I find that we try not to listen to the coaches and do something different. Um, so, but we are not going to get into that right now. Um, so, <laughs> that, what's your? That's him a little personal. Um, Rashi. Uh, Rashi? Pardon me? Where's your, what's your next game? My next game? You mean here, right? Yeah, my next yeah, game? My, uh, beer, beer. Um, school boys. Okay, so you plan to be trained all after that game? I I, 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 I would think. Um, no, they, I think they, they, they be for all because they, they played on the... um. The, Marks, yeah. the weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I want to wish you all the best for the rest of the season. I'm really happy for you and how you're progressing. And I hope that you continue to progress and still keep working hard and do not try to come down to the level of players. Let them try to get to the your level. All right. So, I I don't I, I don't wish you I don't wish you the best, Rashi. I don't <laughs> wish that. Yo, no, I can't. I can't. I, can't, I, can't yeah, I mean, we, we can wish you the best. You don't. We, the best doesn't mean you have to win. <laughs> nah, nah, we can wish you the best. Good. So we it's wish you the best, Bye, Rashi. So we will we will hopefully um if you win player of the week again, you know, we have another interview. <laughs> <laughs> so we we'll, we we'll talk later. You have a good evening. I think you have practice now, so you go and practice. All right, thanks. Enjoy your night. Yeah, Rush. Thank you. Yes, uh, Avenger only one. Yes, sir. Um, I remember the Bear Bear competition now is week two. Uh, we can see there are, there are the four and then the, the other four. <laughs> right? And I am, um, it's just unfortunate that it has come down to that again. Yeah. Because of all the movement, I mean, players leaving teams, teams getting a little weaker. Um, and then um, the situation where um, the season starting early, you can see that it's early starts because the, the shooting is not that good. Um, yeah. uh, people shooting 40% from the field and 20, 30, 30 enough, 30 little bit from three. But I expect that will... That will improve as the season goes on. So yeah. I, that, I'm not too disturbed by that. Um, what I am disturbed about, not a lot disturbed, but concerned about when it comes to basketball in Barbados is who is coming up. Uh, because you see Warrens, they don't look bad. 
they're not playing bad, but obviously they are just trying to get the legs into Division One. Uh, sorry, in Premier League. So, so you could see that they are still trying to find the legs. Lakers have been in some problems based on personnel. Uh, as soon as they get one player, another player get hurt, and yeah. and then as soon as that one hurt player get comes back, another player get hurt. So yes. Lakers in a, in a, is a quandary. Then we have the schoolboys who are they look organized, but they're just inexperienced. Yeah. And then you have the Spartans. And obviously the Spartans took the biggest hit of the player movement. Yeah. And they are looking, they are looking relegation right in the face. And that's unfortunate, but um, yeah. that's how it is. Yeah. Um the you got Pine and Cal that they talked with basically um three and oh. Um then we got Celtics at two on one. They took their first loss um to Cavs. I guess we could talk about that game shortly in a bit. Then you obviously you got um we got a bunch of teams at one and two, but like does like that mean one of these things is really not like the other? Or like like Bulls I on I I'm I'm on Bulls, but uh Bulls being at one and two is not like Obviously, any world, there's only three games, but then they also played playing at Cavs, which are right now two of the best teams, to very close games. So then the schedule should obviously get easier as it, as it goes on. So them being one or two is obvious that they're still the uh, top four or top team in the league. Um, Trident, um, even though they are they lost their last two games, it's good that they got a win under their belt, especially early. Right, so that one or two still looks good. You know, it's good for their confidence or their experience or uh, or whatever. Warren's, as you said, you know, they're not playing bad. They got a win um, over school boys. Um, so as you say, like I think they have they they unfortunately because of Spartans uh, play a movement and the situation. Warren's looks to be safe right now in terms of obviously staying up. Um, so once they get, I think that as we said it earlier, the, the best thing if Warren's at least stay once Warren stay up, I'm pretty sure that they will. Yeah, I think that's that would be a plus for them, yeah. And then we have um Lakers, as you already said, you know, there's injuries, st st stuff like that early on. Like, um, uh, I saw I think Keith turned his ankle or whatever, or yes. hurt his ankle, no. yeah, yeah. So he's no after David got hurt, I think, the first, yeah, even though David came back, I need back to the last game, <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's a, it's a bunch of early. Moving um parts for for Lakers, but as best thing about it, still early even in the first round. Maybe we still got enough hope. We still got the second round, so you know it's still a lot of time for teams to really get their uh foot under it. But um, we had I don't know if you want to talk about the Cavs or the Celtics game. Yeah, um, that Cavs and Celtics game was very interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, because really and truly, Celtics lost the game in the first half. Um, because both teams scored the same amount of points in the second half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so basically they lost the game in the, in the first half. And what is more interesting is the style of basketball that is being played. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed that all the teams have a, a flair of Devin Blair um, <laughs> um, in, in their cast. Um, I saw Celtic shot 100 shots in their first game. They only scored yeah. three points, but that was yeah. 100 shots. Um, yeah. I saw against against Lakers finally shot 59 trees. I mean, the, the percentage was only 30 something, but if you shoot 59 trees and you score 30 something, that's 21 trees or that that 50 or that 59. I mean, that's still well, but well, 63 points. So so everybody is trying the the the, the volume thing and yeah. and I know shooting a lot of trees, but I, I don't have an issue with it. My only issue is people just shooting trees and standing around and hoping that it score more than I would like to see, you know, people mixing it up a little bit more. Yeah. Um I I I agree. Um I it seems like Celtics are like getting out as much shots as they can. And and the theory, in a way, I guess you could it, it makes sense in a way like if if you look at it, if you get enough shots, if you can make even if the percentage is low, like just off of the volume alone, you will be you, you will be hoping that you can score enough still. But as you said, like um 
there's a difference between getting up a lot of shots and then getting up a lot of quality shots. Because if you take a hundred shots and like eighty or more, like just shots for shots' sake, and another team shot seventy shots or seventy five, and they got like sixty quality shots, well then you know, even though they took a lot less shots, you know, um, the quality and the good looks more likely would get through over just shooting shots for shooting shots' sake. So um, I think what going forward, if if teams are getting quality looks, even if they shoot a lot. And I think that can work. Um, in the in the Cavs and Celtics game per se, it was a it, it, it was a physical game. Um, you know, Cavs always play physical, so you you, you kind of have to match that or come close if you want to um compete with them. Um, I thought Theo had a very good game scoring was He had thirty points on thirteen of sixteen shooting. I think he made thirteen of you know I think twelve or twelve or something from from two. So like he. Did not miss from front two. Um, Devron had twenty seven. He, he he turned his ankle early in the game, uh, but then he came back. Still had twenty seven. And Gavin had twenty one. But the one stat I will say for Celtics that if you were any course that you would be concerned 30, 30 turnovers because Cavs are, are, are physical. Cavan again having thirty turnovers. Thank like, oh, you. Oh no, what the you only game he is on left is in a bakery. <laughs> exactly. Like, you are so, not going to win turnover ball thirty times. Yeah, so I am sure and then that you only uh, lost by what? Um, the twelve, something like that. Yeah, was, yeah. So like, so, so like, so I'm, it really, so Charlie, you really, you know, the yeah. turnover thing, you would, you will be better off. Yeah, I'm sure Charles will 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 definitely want to cut down on those turnovers for sure. Yeah. So that is the Bear Bear competition week two. We had with us Rashi Miller, who was the peak player of the week, and up next is the Bearden Scouts and the NBA. Three, two, one. And now, yes, we are joined with the uh, with Bearden Scouts. This is Alan Pinder. And uh, we know that Alan is a, you know, a top NBA analyst, especially when he's, you know, working with Horton Session. Um... <laughs> And he, he he mentioned some stuff that happened, and we want to know what time is it in LA. I heard some rumblings about trading one LeBron James. You really feel that is a that is a something? I actually think it would be a good trade for the Knicks. It I would mean, be. I think he, I, I think I think I think it would trade. I think yeah. I think he would actually fit pretty well on that team. Um. They need like one more piece right now. I think he actually fit pretty well there, and I want not. I don't think it's ever going to happen, but <laughs> just for argument's sake, yeah, I think it actually would not be a bad a, a bad trade. It actually, might not be a bad trade for LA too, because LA would then get some capital then to start rebuilding. But is it time to start rebuilding the LA? That's the that's the big question, though, because uh, things aren't looking too good. The trade deadline is in a few days, and I'm not sure what LA is going to be able to do to really improve their team significantly. I mean, they, they real, Rob Palenka was able to pull a Hail Mary last time and do some things to get the team to the conference finals this year. I am not sure. But the, I think the team start to play better um, last few weeks. The low has been playing really well. Um Austin Reeves seems to pick back at his, his level as well, too. So I think they should probably just make some moves around the margins um, and probably hold on to those picks, see what they can do, unless they can do something major. But just make some moves around the margins and hope that it gets internal development and see how far the team can go. But yeah, I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think there's a team can do a whole lot right now, probably outside of getting to the play in. Maybe get to round two if they're lucky. But yeah, so and first and round I, team. I team. Round two is not a, a, a thing that, that that LeBron James would be thinking about. Um, no, it's, yeah, yeah, he definitely would be happy with that. Yeah, but he's not the only, only team in trouble because Warriors seem to be in even more trouble than him. For sure, yeah. Warriors are, are definitely, yeah, they, it's definitely time for them to rebuild for sure. Um, Yeah, I, I, I'm not even sure they're a playoff team at this point. Yeah, I, I really think that it's time for them. Well, 
they have to see how the how the marriage goes. Cause they're talking about this big tree, but it is like no big two and a half. Uh, and 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 one and a half. Steph, <laughs> Steph is still so. If that's the math, then it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's it. But what do you think the um, Avenger only one? Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I have a formula for how the Lakers season goes. Right. Here, this this bear with me, right? Okay. So, right, <laughs> Lakers, Lakers play right bad, right? Uh. Basically, most of the season, fight five hundred basketball, right? Uh, then, right, they have a a great win against a team that nobody expected them to win. Uh. Like, one, they want the actual good teams, right? Uh. Then they go on like a maybe a two or three game win streak, right? And the media asks, right, is this game the turning point for, for the Lakers in the season? <laughs> I kid you not, because I've seen that <laughs> video title at least four times th this season. Then the <laughs> Lakers lose against a team that they shouldn't. Go back on a three or four game losing streak. Repeat steps one through four. That's literally <laughs> the entire season. Like they, they literally, I see, I see, I swear, I seen Prince a repeat. video that say, yep, yeah, that that says. Is this a turning point of the season? How much turning points in the season can you get? Because we got both fighting now, right? So, um, as Alan said, um, I think last year, Rob Palenka, I think that was a late night and then a ball. I, that, like, that was a Hail Mary move. I don't serve that Hail Mary, Hail Mary move cohort two, two years in a row. Because, like, with that team, right, uh, last year, you could have at least seen, right, what the big, what the biggest issue was in terms of their main players. It was that Westbrook didn't fit with the team. It, it, it really didn't have much to do with Westbrook being a good player or not. It was whether he fit on the team because he fits yep. way better on, on, on the Clippers. Like, he, he fits in yep, seamlessly. Yep. But with the Lakers, it wasn't a good fit. So moving him, like you could see, okay, this is where the team could go from here. I'm not sure you can find clear cut what is the problem this year. Like Eddie and Braun, Bron has missed what four or five games, and like he's thirty nine years old. So you, even by his old old standards, he's played as much games as you probably thought, even more games than you thought that he would be this far. It is missed two or three games. Like if you told me that I had ever missed two or three games in the season so far, and was playing top five, top ten level basketball, I would say, or your Lakers are top three C. Yet they're like the type C. You get they're fighting for the play C. Bron and AD have been relatively healthy and they're still a 500 team. So I don't know what more they can do. I'm not going to lie. The way how Jalen Brunson is playing, Alan said the Bron and Alex will not be bad. I mean, they probably have to rebuild or, I mean, give up Rondo. But I mean, I give up Rondo for LeBron. I mean, yeah, yeah, 50 yeah. years old. I, 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 I give up Rondo. Old, give me a, uh, yeah, you know, 50. The holes, the kitchen, everything. <laughs> yeah, him, him, him and. Um, no, no. Him, no, you. I, I think you have to keep Randall if if, if that's the case. You you got to keep Randall. It, you uh, you package uh, you package a lot of picks. Um, possibly. Every four year, that, that's what every four years is there for. His contract is there for the his contract. Moments, you know? <laughs> his contract is there for exactly for this moment. You know, get, yeah. Get, send send LA a million picks. Send him that contract to help make the money work. Whatever kind of folly you have, but then. <laughs> Maybe a big man or Harkin Skeen, something like that, but yeah. 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 The, the, yeah, the you, picks are what LA will want. Yeah, you probably well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure LA really wants Randall back, to be honest, but yeah. Me, I, me, yeah, me I, either, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think that they'll be ready to, if they move on from, from, from LeBron, they'll be looking to really rebuild. Uh, and you, yeah. I can't see Randall being the piece that you really want to rebuild from. So, yeah. so, right. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, I, I can't see them really needing. Neither that, but that's the best. But no, we had a little issue where um, Embiid got hurt, and they didn't want to use the word surgery or meniscus tear. <laughs> uh, so you had a lot of um, dancing around. What exactly was wrong with? Actually, up to now, actually, we don't really know what's wrong with it. Was here? Oh, you might get a procedure, a procedure, <laughs> and that he is. That he is now, um, he has a meniscus injury, 
You know what I understand me? So I ain't really sure, but what we really want to know, what I really am looking at, this 65 game threshold for MVP. What are your thoughts on it? I'll start with you first there. Um, Avenger only one. Um, quick note on the on the Embiid injury. Injury. I don't gonna lie, right? I don't know any <laughs> any non simple there's any simple injury that you need uh, a procedure that might put you out to maybe the first or second round of playoffs. I don't I don't know what's our I don't know if that's just a slight thing, but you know, I don't I hey, not a doctor. Don't go we ain't got PSD, so hey. Uh but in terms of the sixty five game rule, right? I've been seeing a lot of videos talking about it online. A lot of people have, have been talking about it, right? And I have no problem with it, right? I understand both sides in terms of there's a little thing where, because um, it's not just MVP, it's the all-NBA, all-defensive team. And there are certain players who have contracts where there are incentives. If this person makes the all-NBA team or whatever, they get $27 million, $47 million or whatever. In the case of Therese, um Halliburton, right? So I get why they might be a little bit upset in terms of they're not necessarily sitting out games. They're like actually injured. And the 65 game threshold does not leave any leeway as in you might be, you might have had an awesome season, but you only play 64 games, right? So, but because you only play 64 games, that, you're automatically out regardless of how you did. So I understand that side. On the flip side, especially for the MVP, I did some some, some research, right? There's only been one MVP who has played less than 65 games in a full season where it wasn't like a, a shortened season, um, 72 games when um, you catch one. That doesn't um, obviously count. And I think the Bob Cousy won one when it was only 70 games or whatever. But I, that was obviously earlier in the thing. And that was Bill Walton. Bill Walton is the only MVP who's played less than 65 games to win the MVP. So generally speaking, 65 games is the amount of games that the with the least amount of games that the MVP would usually play anyway. So um I guess people are just upset because there's no an official thing on it. And like if you play if you average 40 and 20 but you only play 64 then you are disqualified. But based on history, that's kind of how it always has been. So what, what about you there Alan? Yeah, I agree. Well, Kina Sell is right. 65 games, the voters normally take that into account anyhow. So 65 games is usually will usually be a good amount for MVP. I'm a little conflicted about it overall though, because it's good because load management, no one really likes load management. And we all know who's like the poster boy for load management. It's Kawhi Leonard. And a lot of this stuff, his camp. He was in Toronto, a little bit in San Antonio, kind of wanting to take rest for certain games and whatnot. So the, the issue about it is that most load management that we find now to me comes mainly from the teams and not as much from the players. Mm. But the, but the agree, players yeah. are going to be but the players are going to be taking the brunt of this mm. of this thing because the teams will benefit to a degree. Because I mean, let's say yeah. a Tyrese Halliburton situation. Team is going to kind of benefit because they can get him at not his full max. Uh -huh. So, some of the load man, mostly load management, does come from the team, but the players going to have to bear the brunt of it. But I think at the same time, the league knows that a lot of this is in the players' hands. So, if the players want to play and the players feel that they're good enough to play, and the medical staff and say, well, yes, we think you can play and the risk isn't going to be significant nearly more for you playing right now, the players are going to play. So I think it, they're aiming at the players to try and to make sure the players do play. Because I think right now the teams are saying, well, there may be a little bit of risk, we can just risk you. Because maybe we can just rest you because we don't want to really incur any risk. We can try to reduce risk as low as possible. But I think, I mean, there's, a, there's any risk of going there when you're playing that something can happen. Because I think even with the NBA situation, what happened in the Golden State game, from what I understand from listening to different from different uh, people that were talking about the whole medical situation, it doesn't seem like that particular point was when that injury that he got would have occurred. Mm -hmm. He's been having issues with that knee 
for, for years now, but particularly since earlier in January. Yeah. And even the Pacer game he played just before the Denver game where everyone had a whole hurrah about it. He did tweak his knee in that game. He did leave, and I thought he was going to come out for that game. He did come back, play a little bit. But when he did come out, I was like, well, he's definitely not going to play that Denver game because he's probably going to be sore and that knee is going to swell up. And he didn't play. Funny enough, they didn't have an injury report, so the team got fined for not putting on the injury report. But, yeah, I, I think that most of this load management usually comes from the teams. The players are going to have to bear the most responsibility for it. But I think I said players are going to be incentivized to say, well, hey, listen, I'm good enough to play. I have stuff riding on this. Um, I feel good enough. Once you tell me that I'm not putting myself by, by risk by playing, I'm going to play. And I think that's what they leave once because they want the players to play. Yeah, I also, you also got to look at the fans because if LeBron is only going to be in New York for one game, and I mean, I pay a premium to go to New York to see LeBron play and hear that LeBron decided the morning that he had indigestion and he decided not to play. <laughs> then, you know, then I know what I mean. I mean, I would throw my ticket through the window early because <laughs> I am saying, I don't mind seeing Brunson, but I could watch him on TV. <laughs> I want to see LeBron. I don't see LeBron. So yeah. I can see where the where the where the thing comes from. And I also see where they have problems with load management. So um I don't have a problem with it either. Um, but I don't think they would be as I don't think they'd be a strike if somebody plays 64 games or somebody plays 63 games. I don't think they would be I think I think I think you can actually appeal, especially if you were if you had a legitimate injury. Like if you miss like those games, I, I I believe I heard some talk about an appeal if it is um like close enough. I think if it's a game off, I actually think I heard something, but I I might be wrong. I, I I'm gonna check, but I think there might be if it's a if it was a legitimate injury that they had. Okay, it'll be inter- it'll be interesting to see. I know with Indiana's situation, they were saying the in season tournament final game that game technically doesn't count. Oh, that is. Oh, yeah, stats yeah, yeah. And we don't count or anything yeah. like that. But yeah. so, but Tyrese was obviously in Tyrese's situation. It's like, well, he's going to need that game. So, game. Oh, so they might, um, okay, okay, okay. So, but so apparently, I, there was conversations and the game originally was not going to count, but no, it does count okay. toward okay. his game's okay. play total. Okay. But it right, wasn't well, going to count toward his side initially. So, they will. Okay. Well, that is, that is the mess and its problems with. And LeBron James and the East <laughs> and other problems with this 65 games. But, of course, we can't leave unless we have pick five. And last week was not a very good week for anybody. <laughs> but uh, let's just say that the slim lead is being kept by who is leading. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, first thing, on Tuesday, we have Memphis at New York. Memphis at New York. I, I I can go on a limb and say going for New York. I don't think I don't, I'm not, I don't think I was a limb. I think <laughs> I'm the old tree. That's why I gave him the next two. <laughs> yeah, Memphis has got Memphis has got G League team at this point. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> New York. <laughs> oh, that's not kind at all. <laughs> no, then on Wednesday in New Orleans at Clippers. New Orleans at Clippers. Uh, Clippers, I feel like Clippers on a big uh, Clippers are playing on a really good basketball right now. So I mean, you the game with Ellie said, "Uh, I say game with uh, with Clippers." Oh, so Kilang on the, the, the game is Clippers. Um, Alex? Oh no, uh, he asked me if the game is in LA. Oh no, yes, the game is in LA. Okay, I'll go with Clippers. Then. Yeah. Okay, with me if it was in if it was in New Orleans, you're going with New Orleans. You might well, consider it. Oh, yeah, you would have considered it. I got the Clippers too. Just because they're in LA. And <laughs> Thursday, we have Minnesota at Milwaukee. Milwaukee with uh-huh. the new minted head coach. That is Doc Rivers. Oh, brother. Um, uh, I, so remember the- one, I remember one time picking and picking the, the Timberwolves was a, a for sure. Like, what are you doing? But I can pay the goals now because hey, they're a good team. So, so you going Minnesota? Yeah, 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 Minnesota. What about you, Alan? Minnesota as well. Okay. Um, a lot of faith in that. I, I I go with Milwaukee just because you're going to go in Minnesota. Yeah, but you faith in that. 
not really. I don't have any faith in them <laughs> at all. <laughs> then there are a couple of teams at the bottom of their respective conferences. This is Houston at Toronto. Houston at Toronto. Uh, a G League matchup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things, right? The Spurs fan. I want I want Raptors to win because if they drop below, I think six. If they drop below seven, then they get to keep their pick. If they are seven and later, then the Spurs get their pick. So I'm hoping that they start winning some games. But I ain't gonna win. I ain't gonna Rockets. I feel like you feel the Rockets gonna go. What about wait, you, Alex? Yeah. Mm, um, go with the Raptors. Go with the Raptors. I see whole Adams right. <laughs> All right. So I hear. <laughs> I I'm going to honestly. I don't know which one to go with, but since that um, RJ Barrett is on my team, I go with Toronto. I hope I actually hope I get this one wrong. And <laughs> the final five pick five game, okay, see at Dallas. This should be interesting. Mm. Cool. Luca versus okay. Shea. Uh, I can go with okay. See. Okay, so okay, I'm going to okay. See. What about you, Alan? That's tough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Aria and Luca are back. Yeah. That one's just let, a, let, 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 let me see if I can push that out. Go on your maps. Simply hold teams. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um Simply hold teams. I am going to ask you. Um I like how the mouse playing. Um and there's no logic to my pick, really, than the fact that I will go OKC. 